fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I am here today to um, do my weekly whip and chat. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Whip and chat is WIP work in progress and I'm going to be sort of starting this new one. Um, this is my cute little hedgehog and if you haven't seen the kidding up I did of that, I will stick a card up there for that. Um, so I have everything kitted up and I think I have everything ready to go. I've got a tray, I've got a pin. I think I have everything I need. Although I'm sure once I sit down to actually start diamond painting, I will remember something I forgot. But anyway, so I'm just going to jump in. I am going to kind of move things around and zoom you guys in here so you can see what I'm doing. I think that's close enough. And I am just going to get started. Uh, let me start my timer here and pull up a chair. Okay, so you can see I've already put some, some drills down on the edge just to kind of give me a little edge. Um, and I'm gonna start with some colors because most of this is white. And that seems a little boring, quite frankly, so I'm going to start with some other colors. So I did actually make myself a list today of some things that I wanted to mention because I have some people that I want to thank. Uh, I want to thank, first of all, Robin. Robin sent me a donation for my Random Acts of Kindness so that I could um, continue to send those out. So thank you so much for that. Uh, if any of you are interested, and have the means. If you don't, please don't feel bad about it. That's fine. But if you would like to donate, you can either donate directly to me at my PayPal, which is listed in the description box below, or you can donate to me through Ko-fi, which there is also a link for down below. Ko-fi is basically another buy me a coffee. Um, however, buy me a coffee no longer uses PayPal. And that is where I kind of had everything set up. So rather than go to a whole new system, I just hopped on over to Kofi. So I do post things over on Kofi every once in a while. So if you're interested, look me up over there. Um, what else? Uh, Vicki, thank you so much. Vicki sent me a very nice card and some homemade wax, which I'm hoping to try out at some point. So thank you for that, Vicki. Uh, and then I need to thank Jess. Uh, I have just put out my video on my kind of diamond painting storage comparison, which if you haven't seen that, I will stick a picture up in the corner so that, or a card up in the corner so that you can click on that and find that video. Um, I have tried all different kinds of storage and I like them for various different reasons. So go check that out and I'll explain my likes and dislikes and kind of what I think are the pros and cons of each system that I've tried. But my thank you to Jess because she's turned me on to yet another system that I haven't heard of that I will definitely be trying out. And uh, when I do, I'll be sharing it with you guys. So <laughs> I told my husband, you know, I'm trying to be so good and not buy diamond painting things because I kind of want to keep my whole budget for kits. So I've been trying not to buy anything. Um, however, the storage system looks amazing. And so I'm going to give it a try. And so, yeah, there's that. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who responded on that video. I'm constantly amazed at how differently people do their hobbies and you know how kind of differently I diamond paint than other people. Um, so yeah. And you know, again, that's, that's someone else I need to thank. Uh, I told you guys, I think in my last whip and chat that I was looking for a different kind of storage system for my drills. Um, and that I was not having a lot of success and I had bought a couple of containers, just some, some cheap plastic ones that I thought would 
work. Um, they don't, they don't work for what I want. And basically, I mean, they would work, but then I have to redo kind of my whole system. And I don't know if I want to do that yet. So, uh, Diana made the comment that, you know, part of the reason my system has kind of become so unwieldy for me is because I'm keeping all of my squares and rounds together. And then if I separated them out, then I would only need to get out half as many boxes at once when I was kidding or de-kidding because of course round drills are on round kits and square kits are on square drills are on square kits, which, you know, seems obvious, but again, sometimes I get so focused on what I'm doing. I miss the forest for the trees. So while that is not the perfect solution, it is a solution and one that I hadn't thought of and probably one that I am going to do at least for the short term until if and when I figure out some other system and way to store the drills. Um, I could have just done it completely differently and started over with a brand new system. The reason that I didn't want to do that was because I've invested so much money in the boxes and the bags. And, you know, I spent so much time making my stickers to put on there and I cut all the cards myself. Um, you know, I could go a different route and I looked at like using blank playing cards um, but they're a different size than the bags that I'm using. And I wasn't sure that I would like them with the bags. So, um, I think I may, like I said, just kind of stick to what I'm doing for now and, um, do as Diana suggested and kind of split up the rounds and the squares. I would still keep the round ABs with the round drills and the square ABs with the square drills, but she's right. It would certainly let me kind of minimize the number of things that I need to drag out when I get something down. Um, and you know, the whole purpose of me saving my spare drills is because I want to do some heaven and earth designs with leftover drills rather than having to spend the money to purchase, you know, all new. And I'm only ever going to be using, you know, either round or square. I'm never going to be using them all at once. So, uh, like I said, kind of an obvious solution, but one that I had missed. So thank you to her for suggesting that. Now I am going to spend some time going back in. And if I split them up that way, that means I need to make a whole second set of divider cards, which I can do but it will take me some time because I probably will end up cutting them myself. Um, I'm kind of playing around with the dimensions and seeing if I want to leave them the way that they are, if I want to try them a different way. Um, cause I could make them a bit smaller and they would still work with the bags that I have. So I'm playing around with that. And then also, um, I would need to make a second set. And so now I'm like, well, if I'm going to go to all the trouble of making these again, um, I was in the process of kind of tweaking them and maybe getting ready to share them with you guys as a PDF. So you could just like print them out on sticker paper and then cut them yourself if you wanted to. Um, but now I'm playing around if I'm going to separate out rounds versus squares, you know, kind of how pretty do I want to make it and what do I want my divider cards to look like and you know that kind of thing um plus it's a little bit of work for me because i'm lazy <laughs> and i will want to use my cutting machine to cut out the stickers so that i basically just have to peel them off the page and then stick them on the divider card rather than printing them off and cutting myself, which means I have to kind of arrange them on the page differently because margins and such will be different for my machine than it will be for somebody that was just like printing it out on a regular piece of paper or a regular piece of eight and a half by 11 sticker paper and then cutting it themselves. So a little bit of kind of behind the scenes work for me, but I do intend to Kind of put it together but like I said now I'm kind of playing around in my head with what do I want it to look like 
um, you know, I could make them very plain Jane and leave them kind of the way they are with just a, I mean, right now they're basically just a box with the DMC number on it. And then I made kind of a, a diamond um, watermark background on mine. Um, but now I'm playing around with, do I want to leave them like that? Or because I'm now separating them, do I want to do something a little bit differently? And I, so it's just going to take me sitting in front of my software and kind of playing around for a little bit and seeing what I can find that I think will be pretty and what I want. So it's kind of like figuring out what font you want to use. My sister and I both could spend days on projects trying to figure out what font we want to use to make it look just right. So there's that bit of kind of playing around with it as well that I want to do. So thank you to everyone who is, you know, kind of um, putting information out there for me. I really appreciate it. And I hope that makes you know, the channel richer for everyone else as well, because, um, you know, my goal is to share kind of all my trials and tribulations with you guys so that hopefully on your diamond painting journey, you can avoid some of the mistakes that I have made, uh, and can also benefit from some of the things that I have discovered as I, um, continue on in this hobby. I'm still working towards my, you know, 10,000 hours goal. So, uh, I decided to work on this kit. I could have been working on my coral fish kit, my treasure studios art kit. Uh, however, because it is so much bigger, I didn't want to kind of disassemble everything from where it is on my drafting table where I'm diamond painting with it and bring everything in here where I film and then have to, you know, reassemble it, film the whip and chat and then do it all over again. So I just elected this time to kind of work on the hedgehog since I had it kitted up and kind of ready to go so that I can, you know, get one of those maybe small wins out of the way. I am over halfway done with the coral fish and we're, we'll be past the halfway point of the month or at the halfway point of the month, I guess, when, um, you guys see this. So I'm really seriously considering doing my Alice kit for the Alice in a Winter Wonderland event. It's not as big as I thought. And so I think I might have time to finish it. And that would let me get two kits done kind of from my stash. Um, my stash is difficult for me because I kind of add to it. You know, I, I get things from other companies that I want to share with you guys. And a lot of that stuff, if I'm not going to diamond paint it personally, some of it I do, some of it I don't. And so some of it will kind of get put away in my random acts of kindness stash to, to be given away so that somebody is getting some use out of it. Um, I just don't have time to diamond paint all of the things that I unbox. I wish I did, but I don't. And so, um, trying to keep up with all of that as well as trying to keep up with, you know, what's currently in my stash. And I mean, I guess it's a little bit of cheating for me because I'm not spending any money to get additional diamond paintings, but then they may end up in my stash. But generally the ones like that, that I get are going to be 30 by 40 or smaller. So I'm not ending up with any more big kits for the most part. I do have some surprises on the way. Um, so I can't wait to kind of share those with you guys. One of them I'm pretty excited about, but I'm not going to, I don't want to share a bunch of details until what I'm expecting gets here. And then I can kind of see what I think, but I'm excited about it. So a little teaser there for you. Uh, what else do I need to catch you guys up on? Let's see. Um, health wise, and I just put those away and I see what I missed. 
health wise, uh, you guys, man, healthcare is kind of a trip right now. So first of all, I'm sure those of you who are not new to the channel know about my ongoing saga with my knee. And I had kind of resigned myself that I was going to basically be scheduling a surgery. And I went to the doctor's office to check in for my appointment. And they informed me that I called in and moved my appointment, that I canceled the one that day and I had rescheduled it. And so I'm like, no, I didn't. I, I wouldn't have called in and moved it because, you know, I've been dealing with this issue for more than six months. There's no way I would have called in and changed the appointment. And if I had, why would I show up today? So I don't know what happened. They, they even went back and, and, you know, looked at their system and all they could tell me was that, yes, the appointment had been for the day that I was there, but that they assume I had called in and rescheduled the appointment. And one of the receptionists has said, I remember talking to you. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know who you talked to, but it wasn't me because I didn't call and reschedule it. And you know how sometimes like literally you think, am I crazy? Like, did I call and change it? And I've just forgotten. I'm like, no, I, I, because, because so many things kind of are, were waiting on me finding out, you know, when I was going to have surgery, how long I was going to have to be off. Like I was, you know, to tell my boss and, you know, my husband was going to have to make arrangements to be there for transportation. And so there's just no way that I would have done that. So, you know, I'm left kind of going, well, okay, great. So here I am, you know, finally get to this appointment and now I'm going to have to wait for another two weeks because they're telling me it's been rescheduled. So they ended up calling the doctor and the doctor said, Oh, I've got time. Just let her come back in now. So I ended up getting to keep my regular appointment, which was amazing. And hopefully they canceled the other one. I'm assuming that somebody called in to change an appointment and they just grabbed, you know, my appointment cell. Cause it's like a big spreadsheet and you can just grab an, a person's little cell with their appointment and all their information and basically drag and drop it to another day. So I'm assuming that somebody else called in and things got changed around, which is kind of sucky if they're that person, because that means their appointment's going to be all messed up too, but you know, without knowing who it was. So anyway, I got to go in and I really liked the doctor. She spent a lot of time, you know, kind of listening to me and explaining how I got there, all the things that we had tried up to that point. Um, she asked a lot of questions about, you know, how it felt, where did it hurt? She spent time looking at my knee and kind of going over everything, which made me feel really good. Cause a lot of times by the time you get to that point, you know, you get a doctor who just assumes, okay, you've tried everything. We're ready for surgery. Let's just get it scheduled. And she went through my MRI with me. Um, the previous doctor, when I got my, my cortisone shot had tried to go through it with me, but they were having one of those computer days and she couldn't get it to pull up on the computer. So I never did get to see my MRI results. And so she pulled them up and kind of walked me through the whole thing, walked me through all of my x-rays, told me what she saw, what she didn't. Um, you know, and at that point then did another exam of my knee and said, okay, you know, kind of looking to see where did it hurt? Where didn't it hurt? What was going on? All of that good stuff. And at the end of it said, well, you know, the kind of injury that they think I have based on the MRI, or at least the radiologist thought, is something that is unfortunately sometimes just not visible, even on an MRI, not visible on x-ray, not visible on an MRI. And so basically sometimes they just have to go in there and look. And while I understand that, that's scary for me because, you know, anytime you're opening up something like that on your body, you're just inviting possible issues down the line because 
anytime you cut into someone, that's just a possibility, which is why I've been trying so hard to avoid it. And she basically said, well, here's our options. And, you know, one of them was not an option for me, which was basically just to live with it. And I was like, uh, I can't, I can't function the way that I want to in my life with it like this. So that's not an option for me. So what's next? And so she said, basically, she thinks I have bursitis. And while my meniscus is not in great shape, you know, I'm not 16 anymore. And as you get older, cartilage like your meniscus wears. And, but she's not seeing all of the other things that she would expect to see if that's what the true issue was. Which made me feel better because I've often wondered if that's truly what the issue is based on my symptoms. And she's kind of the first person who has said, well, it could be this other thing. So because that's much easier to treat, let's try that first. And then, so basically what happened was I got another cortisone shot, but instead of my knee, it's basically kind of in my shin. It's right, right around, it's maybe a couple, couple inches, couple, three inches below my knee where my, basically where your hamstring attaches. And she said, you know, it could take a couple of weeks for it to really take effect to just take it kind of really easy for the next couple of days. And we talked about surgery because if this doesn't work, then it's likely that it is my meniscus and she's going to have to go in and do some surgery. And we spent some time discussing the kind of surgery that it is because basically if it is what they suspected, or at least what the radiologist suspected from the MRI, I would need to be on crutches for a minimum of six weeks. And she said, that's the absolute minimum. And she said, you know, basically the kind of surgery, the repair that I would have to do, if you can't stay off of it for six weeks, there's no point in me doing the repair because you'll damage what I fixed. And then we're right back where we started. And she said, you know, just being off for six weeks is just not an option for some people. And I said, well, you know, luckily for me, it would be. I mean, I wouldn't be immobile. It's not like I would be on bed rest for six weeks. I would just be on crutches. So while it would make my job difficult, it would at least allow me to still do my job. I mean, I could still go to work. I wouldn't be able to do all the things that I was doing, but I could still be there and that would be preferable than, you know, me being completely off for that entire six weeks and them having to figure out how to cope without me there. So, so the upshot of it was I ended up getting this other injection and now I get to wait a few more weeks. And she did tell me, even if she had ended up thinking that it was my meniscus and she needed to do surgery, she couldn't schedule it right now anyway. Our, our hospitals and even our, you know, I travel to the kind of the next town over. We don't have a hospital in the town where I live. We have a very small clinic and we're lucky to have that. Um, for a lot of the years that I have lived here, we've had nothing. And so we've had to kind of travel to this other town for, for everything. No doctors, no dentists in the town where I, I live. And so it was actually kind of funny because when I started doing all this PT and stuff, my there's actually a, a physical therapist in town, which has never happened before either. So that's been nice. Um, when I was doing it, it was literally just down the street from me. But anyway, um, even our little rural hospital has been overrun. They've got so many patients that are ill right now. Um, with COVID and everything that's going on that they are not allowing any non-emergency surgeries to be scheduled. So even if she had wanted to schedule it for me that day, she couldn't. So, but on the upside, like I said, I'm hopeful that 
maybe I finally figured out the answer because when she was talking to me about it and kind of describing, you know, what it would be and, and where it would be, it all kind of matched up exactly with my symptoms. And that's never happened before. You know, all the other stuff, every time I've tried to talk to the doctors about it and they've, you know, consistently thought that it was my knee itself, the joint, I'm like, yeah, but it just doesn't, doesn't quite fit. I mean, yes, I have some of those symptoms, but I also have this other one that you guys don't think matches up. And so, you know, that makes me nervous that maybe it isn't that. And, you know, the whole time she was talking, I was like, oh yeah, yep, 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 yep. So it doesn't feel great yet, but I'm crossing my fingers that maybe I finally, we finally figured out what the solution is and I will be able to get some relief and not only get some relief, but now that we know what the issue is going forward, hopefully, then I can be looking at, okay, what do I need to do to avoid, you know, making it worse going forward? Um, because I really think, you know, I, I've been so focused on getting it rehabbed and back to where it was that I think I've, I may have rushed things and, inadvertently made it worse because I need to just give it some time and let it heal. Cause I was thinking about my aunt and she told me a story one time about, um, my uncle who was a big tennis and racquetball player. He loved playing tennis and racquetball, belonged to a, a local racquetball club. And he would go once or twice a week to play even after he was retired, um, to keep himself kind of fit and healthy. And he was constantly having issues. And i just realized I should have gotten a pen with a multi-placer, but I didn't. So I guess I'm just going to single place all of these for a bit. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay if I do that while I chit chat, right? That's cool. So anyway, um, she said he had basically bursitis in his elbow and that he had gone in several times to get it. You know, he'd been in PT, he'd had injections. He, and finally one of the PT people said to him, you know, you just need to, to get off it. Stop playing for six weeks. Yes, you'll miss playing. Yes, it will suck, but it will give it time to heal. And then you can go back to playing and it will be healed and you should be okay. If you keep going back before it's completely healed, you're just making it worse and you're going to just be in this endless cycle of, you know, PT and then back and then PT and then back until finally you've damaged it enough. You're not going to be able to rehab it. And so, and this was a story that my aunt had told me, you know, years ago. But that was on my mind when she was talking to me about all of this stuff at my appointment. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe that's what I need to do. I need to just, you know, accept the fact that I'm not 16 anymore. My body doesn't recover like it used to. And I just need to give it some time to kind of heal before I try and go out and do anything else. And so, um, yeah, that was on my mind yesterday. And so, so we'll see. Okay. What is this stuck on that drill? It's making me pick that off, whatever it is. Okay. This drill is going to be obnoxious and I don't like that that's on there. So we're just going to, we're just going to get a different drill. Be that way. Be that way and I'll replace you. That's what happens. Okay. So, uh, oh, also thank you to everybody who, if I didn't say it already, thank you to everybody who, um, commented on my storage video. Maybe I said that already. I can't remember. You guys, I'm old. I forget stuff. Obviously it is so cold and windy here right now. Uh, we have a 
a, had a winter storm warning and they were saying that we were gonna get quite a bit of snow. We actually didn't get very much snow at all, but my goodness, it is blowing a gale outside and while we didn't get a bunch of snow, it is so super cold with the wind chill. My husband and I, because it's a, a long weekend for me, my husband has to work on Monday, but I don't. Uh, my, my daughter and I are both off for the holiday. So, I mean, I'll probably be going into work, but I don't have to work. We don't have any kids on Monday. Um, anyway, so because we knew it was going to be bad weather and everything, I was like, well, let's get all of our groceries and everything ordered. Well, we waited too late to get our pickup order in. We normally, I normally go get groceries on Friday and I hadn't done it because I had doctor appointment and other things on Friday. And by the time we got around to ordering them, there were no pickup dates or times left on Friday. So we had to pick them up on Saturday. And you know, I knew it was going to be bad weather and everything. I'm like, let's do it really early so we can get up, do what we need to do, get home, and then we can just be home the rest of the weekend. Well, then we also needed to go to Target and Target drives me crazy. You can do pickup at Target too, which is what we normally do. However, with their little shopping app, if their refrigerators get full, like if they get too many pickup orders and wherever they put all of their cold stuff gets full, they'll just move things out of your cart and put it in your save for later items because they know they don't have room for it in their storage, which is cool. I get that they don't have room for it in their storage, but I don't understand why they have to move it out of my cart. Like I haven't actually ordered the groceries yet. So just leave it in there because it could be next week. You don't know by the time I do that. So anyway, we, when I went to look, it had moved basically everything but one thing out of our cart because they didn't have room in there. Um, either they didn't have room in their refrigerators or it was out of stock. My goodness. I, we ended up going in. We went and got our regular groceries and then we went to Target and went inside to just pick up the few things that we needed. And oh my goodness, you guys, I, I don't remember the last time, you know, barring the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, when everyone went bananas, seeing so many empty shelves. And I know it has to do with shipping rather than, you know, supply and demand really. There's just so many people so sick right now. You know, everybody, if they don't have COVID, they've got some kind of flu bug or stomach bug. I mean, I don't know where, about where you guys are, but here, once the weather kind of turned colder, everybody seems to be sick. And, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. And literally the cold and flu section in Target was decimated. It was almost completely empty. They had seven or eight bags of cough drops and they had some things of like mucinex and a couple of cough medicines. Um, they did have some Dayquil and some NyQuil, but like all the Sudafed, all the Claritin type stuff, um, anything that was kind of cough, cold, flu was empty because we had to go around with everybody kind of being under the weather here in our house a couple weeks ago. And we went through all of our Sudafed. And so I was going to pick up some more just so that we would have it on hand. We don't need it right now because nobody's sick, but I thought, well, I'll just pick up some more so that, you know, the next time somebody does get sick, we've got some on hand. Well, nope, I didn't get to pick any up because they didn't have any. And it just seems to kind of go you know, around the store. I remember a couple months ago when my husband were there and I were there, the chip aisle was almost empty. And the lady was saying, yeah, we just haven't been able to get shipments. It's, it's not that you can't get a hold of it. It's just that we can't get it here. So yeah, it's, 
it's a crazy world out there these days. If it's not one thing, it's another. So, so that was our adventure this weekend. But then, then we were done with all of our running around and we were able to just come home and kind of be chill and, you know, stay at home and do what we wanted to do this weekend instead of having to be out running around, which was nice. So, so one of the things I don't like about these white backgrounds is I feel like these white drills just really accentuate when they're not lined up nicely and they drive me crazy. So anyway, um, so that's my update on my surgery. So yeah, what are you guys up to? I hope everybody is happy and healthy. Uh, oh, another update. We did finally get our information back from the government that we needed to have so that we could get started on the rest of our paperwork for our move to Canada. So, and it's one of those, you know, man, I can always find something to worry about. So we had sent it off and I knew that it was going to be, you know, they said a minimum of six to eight weeks. And I, I knew that it would likely take longer because we'd sent it, um, over the holidays, you know, both Thanksgiving and Christmas had happened while we were, you know, during those eight weeks, they actually got it in under the eight weeks, um, because the eight weeks won't be until this coming week. But my son's arrived and it was just his. And I was like, okay, I could have sworn because we sent them both in together. I could have sworn that they said they would just mail them back to us in one envelope. So now I'm like, did they not get mine? Did they not realize there were two in there? Am I going to have to go through all this again? This is going to delay things even more. And of course I told my husband and he's like, just, it probably just got separated in the mail. It'll be here in the next couple of days. And I'm like, okay, you know, yes, I'm probably jumping the gun. It wasn't that and blah, blah. Yeah. Mine showed up the next day. So all that panic over nothing. But it's kind of scary when you have to, you know, it was a trip, first of all, going to, because we had to go to the local jail to get our fingerprints taken because none of the police departments do it anymore. And so, you know, I'd never been to our local jail before. <laughs> and, and I say local, it's in the, the big town that's near us. We did not because, you know, our local police department in the city where I live doesn't do it. So we had to go to the big, the big city and, um, get it done there. And then we had to send in all the paperwork. And let me tell you, just mailing something to the FBI is kind of scary. So, and then, you know, sitting there waiting to get everything back and but everything came back. Everything's good. So now, like I said, we can move on to the next step. I mean, I get that they need all of this paperwork, but man, sometimes it's like, really, is all this really necessary? I mean, you know, birth certificates and divorce certificates and marriage certificates. And, you know, just some of the questions they ask are so weird. And Although I find it interesting when my husband moved here to the U S I basically had to sign a bunch of paperwork that said, you know, he would not go on welfare. He would not collect unemployment, all of this stuff. I had to fill out all this paperwork to show that I had basically enough money that I could support him if anything would happen. And which, you know, was fine. I did all of that and it was no big deal. But it's just a lot of paperwork to fill out. Canada doesn't have any of that same stuff. I mean, they'll, they ask you some questions, but you don't have to, like for the U.S., I had to provide bank statements and statements of like, you know, retirement accounts. And like, I literally had to prove that I had money and assets. Um, 
you know, Canada will say, yeah, you, you can't just move here and be a deadbeat, which, you know, duh, what country wants that? But, um, they don't go as far as, you know, making me fill out all this stuff and send them copies of our bank accounts and how much money we have and all that kind of stuff. So, and it's a lot less expensive. I mean, all told, for my husband, we probably spent a total of five grand, maybe more, on all the various things that we had to have done and all the application fees and everything. And it is a fraction of that for two of us because it will be my son and I, um, you know, up going up there and, and applying for permanent residency. So I've got to get busy too. I really, I was hoping I would get a language program like, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it now, Rosetta Stone or something like that for um, Christmas so that I could work on my French <laughs> and start learning some basic kind of conversation, but I didn't. So I really need to go out and kind of get something like that so that I have a, a basic understanding. I mean, I don't have to understand French to move up there. And where my husband is from, there's a lot of, I mean, everyone speaks English, but there are also a lot of French speaking people. So, um, you know, I just feel like it would behoove me to learn it. So, and have a feeling that may not be a quick process for me so I probably should get started <laughs> my brain isn't as young as it used to be so I don't pick up things as quickly as I used to so I want all of these to line up better than they're lining up they're making me crazy Why can't they all just be spaced perfectly without me even thinking about it, right? Okay, I think that's as good as I'm probably going to get it for now. I wish they'd used a different symbol than this O underneath, because that's one of the things I don't like. Because it ends up being such a big symbol, you kind of have to place the drill perfectly, or you can kind of see the symbol underneath it which makes me bananas so yeah there's that okay I'm gonna I'm gonna stop working on the white for a minute I see I've got a little little star in there that I either missed or I didn't do that one or something so let me fill that one in and then I think I'm gonna call this whip and chat good you guys I made a nice start on my little hedgehog here um, and you guys got to come along for the ride. So thank you so much. Uh, I think I remembered to say thank you to everybody that I wanted to. If I missed anyone, I apologize. I will try and catch you on the next video. Um, if I don't get, if I miss someone. So let me zoom you back out here a little bit. So you can see I didn't get didn't get a ton done, but I got quite a bit done. You see his little foot there and the beginnings of his little prickles on the edge there. So I don't know if you guys can hear that wind blowing. It's pretty windy out there. It sounds like a hot chocolate and a blanket kind of day. So thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this whip and chat. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to do all the things on your way out. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Hit that subscribe button. That helps me out even more. And hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.